making sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hey everybody, this is Steve from Score Art Glass, where I hope to help you discover the beauty of stained glass, learn tips, tricks, and techniques so that you can create your own stained glass artwork. And welcome to the channel. And tonight we are going to continue on with the LBC branding uh, silhouette that we been uh, that we started last week. Um, so tonight, if you know, we're going to do some soldering. But what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to go over uh, some of the cutting techniques and um, that I that I did on this particular piece, um, and then also uh, some of the foiling that I did. So I'm going to kind of catch you up because we're going to uh, ready to solder uh, the piece tonight. Now, if you haven't checked out LBC Branding uh, channel yet, uh, want to make sure that you want to go check it out, uh, especially if you want to make your mark on the world. Uh, our link in the description below. And if at any time tonight um, you decide that you want to, you know, help the channel out or support the channel in any way. You can go to the buy me a coffee link that is actually pinned in the chat um, if to make it a little bit easier, but it's also contained in the description below as well uh, on all my videos. So with that, uh, let's see here. We are going to uh, get into just talking about the, uh, the cutting uh, of the glass and also the foiling. So here we are just, you know, I'm, I'm preparing. And what I like to do is I, I actually like to section off my uh, pieces um, and just, you know, get it to where I can get to each piece fairly easy that I'm not trying to make some real, uh, I guess you could say dangerous cuts in a sense that would uh, make your pieces vulnerable from, uh, to breaking and have to redo them. So I, I really just try and section everything off to where it's pretty straightforward on how to, you know, carve out everything. So here, and sorry about the headshot, sometimes I forget where my camera is, um, but I do an inside curve. So I make that first actual cut and then I come back and I actually do a secondary cut. That allows me to actually break out the pieces a little bit easier. And when you make that first uh, I'm sorry, when you're making that second cut after that first one, um, it's actually uh, putting additional pressure on that initial score mark. Uh, so it just does make it a little bit easier to, to uh, get out. Uh, I had, and then here's an, uh, another one. Now, this one I had to kind of straighten out because I didn't want to go too deep yet. Uh, and then I went back and I did my secondary score mark. Now, granted, most of the time that would be your first mark. And then you would come up and do that. So, um, but it still broke off fairly easy. Uh, and there, and then now here, I'm just going to kind of grow these, this area out um, and let my grinder do the rest of the work. But I do try and get as close as I can without uh, getting, you know, a chance of actually breaking the piece off. So then, you know, once you get done, I got done with a, a couple of these pieces. Um, now I'm going to show you some some pieces where I kind of messed up. Um, <laughs> I didn't think about it real well, um, but it it was able to uh, uh, to make the break. But um, I did have to recut a couple pieces. So here you're thinking, okay, we got a inside curve. Not too bad, right? And you make your inside mark, and then now you're making your other score mark. And but now, if you notice on where my hand is, you know there's not much glass behind there. And ideally, when you're doing inside curves, you actually want to do them first and have a lot more glass behind. Now here, because it's so tight, um, I actually switched over to a method that I use where I actually use two grosing pliers. I do have a pair that is like a quarter inch and you're able to basically kind of use two of them together and break off the glass. Um, 
this way you can actually um, really pull things away. Now you see there, it was, I was pretty mad about that. And, you know, I got a little frustrated and there I'm just trying to explain that, Hey, you need more glass out there on the backside. It does make it a little bit easier to get those inside curves first. So now here's another piece that, Hey, you know, pretty easy cut, just a slight, you know, slight gradual curve. No, no problem there. But you know, sometimes, you know, I was like, ah, let me just go ahead and break this. So then I come back and score everything. And sometimes things just have a mind of their own. <laughs> and I just, I was, got a little frustrated there too. It was like, why in the world would that have broke that way? Um, but it did. So I had to go back and actually recut that piece. Now, as I was cutting this piece out, um, I started to get a little worried. Uh, you see that curly Q there? I was getting a little nervous about that because of the, the, you know, the depth of that and trying to get all that out. Now I don't have a ring saw. Uh, and if I had a ring saw, that would have been really easy able to get that out with no problem. But, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like how that uh, is going to have to do a lot of, um, grossing and then, also, potential of there I am trying to break a piece off with not even scoring it uh, because I was thinking so much about how, what I was going to do about this thing. But then I kind of came up with an idea here at this point. Um, I was like, well, I looked at the pattern and I said, hey, that might be an okay thing to do and to actually make another break mark. Um, I looked at the pattern again and said, oh, that won't look too bad. It just kind of looked like some more of contour of the hair. So I decided to make another piece, 26A, and actually make a break mark there. That would allow me to uh, be able to get in and get that glass out without a lot of grinding or a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of concern of trying to grows it out and then take a chance of the uh, piece breaking it and having to recut it. So um, I just used my X-Acto knife and basically cut out around that line. And basically that became my extra piece. So then I would just uh, score it and break it as I would normally do. So sometimes you just have to make uh, decisions and changes on the fly. Um, I do do that on some of my patterns. Um, especially if I overlook during the design phase, a potential, uh, issue as far as, uh, you know, making, <laughs> making things hard for myself. <laughs> so there, I just kind of put some extra score marks in there, uh, break this off and then use my smaller grosers and just kind of get in there and grows some of that glass out. And then I've got that, uh, thin bit on my, um, grinder that I will I'll be able to go over and grind the rest of that out and really get it to con contour uh pretty good. So as we move on here, this is the the gray glass. Now if you notice all that was black glass. Now this gray glass is actually thicker. It's about a 3 3 millimeter thick glass and it's it's actually pretty thick and is actually tough to break. And here I'm, you know, I made my score marks and trying to break all this out. And it just, just didn't go my way. Uh, right here, when I tried to break off that other piece, uh, right here, it decides to have a mind of its own. And again, another piece I have to go back. So, you know, I don't get everything right the first time. And I do go back and I ha do have to, uh, you know, recut pieces and it does get frustrating, but you know what? I still love it. I still enjoy the process. I still enjoy making things out of glass and just, you know, so here, um, I'm doing my foiling and I did start, uh, some regular hand foiling with those small pieces that you see up by the ear. 
And then I uh, went into using my uh, table foiler for the little bit larger pieces. And it does make a difference uh, there. And as I see little tags, I'll take my X-Acto knife and, you know, cut those out and get those off. Now, this piece, has, you see, has a pretty deep uh, curvature or uh, inner curve there. So what I did is I started on that edge and went all the way around to the other edge, but then pulled enough off to where I can make that uh, curve inside. Now, one thing you want to do on curves like this is you actually want to ensure that you heat that copper foil up along those edges uh, pretty good, either with your finger or just by rubbing back and forth uh, with the uh, fit tool and then roll it over. What that will do, that gives it some, uh, becomes a little bit malleable uh, to where you don't get breaks in your uh, inner uh, contours there because that will show up on your solder line. Um, so now we're moving on to the big old piece of white model glass. And the more and more I work with this glass uh, and just kind of fool around with it, I'm really liking this glass. So I just love the texture uh, and the look of it. Um, so I think I'm going to do some more projects with this uh, glass. Now, again, if you got any uh, questions uh, or anything, you can put those down in the chat. Any comments, uh, feel free to put it down there. Um, again, if you want to support the channel, you can hit that link uh, in the pinned chat for the Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, and you can check out the extras I got on there. And I will have uh, some more announcements coming soon uh, for the Buy Me A Coffee and but i will put that out here uh, pretty soon i'm still working on a few things and i think uh it's going to be good it's going to be good so um be sure to check back to the buy me a coffee uh link as well uh, and also stay tuned to in the channel and again if you are new to the channel be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell below now you see i went back and i had to patch the uh that small indention or a small uh, curve uh, contour that was there uh, because I did have some breaks uh, because it was just so deep. Um, but, you know, you can go back, patch it, just make sure that everything kind of aligns really well. Uh, make sure that you burnish your pieces down really well. And then my cat decided to come in and say hello. So hello, Princey. Yep, and then here I'm just kind of putting it all back together. Uh, tried to take a look at how it's uh, looking and being ready to to move on. Um, so now you know, as I get it all back together, it's actually looking pretty good, and I'm really uh, liking. There's not too many uh, big gaps, so it's actually looking pretty good. So. Now, now that we've got that all back together, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start into the actual soldering. So I'm going to go ahead and move on over to the solder station uh, tonight, and we are going to kind of switch cameras. Now, I'm going to come back. I'll be turning around and looking at the uh, questions, uh, if anybody has any, and then... And answer stopping in between and answering any questions uh, and then continue to uh, the solder. So here's the view we're actually going to have tonight. I mean, well, it decided that it doesn't want to do that view. There it is. There's the view. So I'm going to get everything uh, all set up, and we'll be right back.
Okay, now that we're, did everything come back all right? Seems a little dark and I'm not sure why it's coming up dark on here. Didn't sh that looks like my camera froze up. That's not good. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I am trying to... There it comes. Now it finally came through. Sorry about that. Malfunctioning here, guys. Sorry about. That. May have to switch to another camera if it keeps acting up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on into soldering this. Now we're going to start off tacking everything together. Hey guys, I'm having some technical difficulties here. Um, let me try and move to a different camera. It's just not wanting to cooperate. Okay, sorry. Always has to be always some technical difficulty. Uh, hello, MB. Welcome. Thanks for uh, coming out and uh, watching. Was having some technical difficulties there. Uh, one of the cameras decided to go out on me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this particular piece. And like I said, like I said, I'll be coming back and turning around and answering questions uh, as uh, things go through. And hopefully uh, 
we'll get into some good soldering and maybe some good discussions or questions that people may have. So one thing I do like to do is I like to use some gloves. Um, and, you know, using flux and, and so forth. And then I also use one heat resistant glove. Hopefully you can see that real well. So the first step is we're going to go through and we're going to tack everything together. Now I probably won't get through all the soldering tonight. Um, I'll, uh, I'll actually put out another video uh, showing the, in, the entire uh, process um, from the design to the uh, finished work. But what I like to do is, you know, I've got everything kind of positioned up and I'll just kind of go through and start doing some flexing and I'm going to spot uh, tack pieces together. And I just kind of pick some areas to, especially where I got some joints coming together. I'll usually pick those spots. Now you notice I'm actually using some cardboard underneath my pattern. Um, and the reason for this tonight, instead of directly on the wood, um, is because this model glass is pretty textured on the back side of it. And it actually, whoops, it actually uh, makes everything kind of uh, a little wobbly uh, in this. It was actually in this area, it was a little wobbly. So by having the cardboard down, it allows me to press down and not really, you know, not have it wobble uh, because you could create a, by pressing down, you could create a fulcrum point and the glass could actually crack on you. So that's kind of the reason why I've, I've actually got cardboard underneath right now. Now, one little detail on this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, one thing with uh, this piece is it's got some detail that I'm going to be doing on it. And uh, probably before we go tonight, I'm going to actually get your opinion on the detail, how I'm going to do the detail on this particular piece. Oop, I don't want to put my tack mark there because I need to come back to that area because that's actually where the detail is going to be. Okay, I've got some there. So actually for my tacking, I use 50-50 solder um, just to kind of hold everything in place. Kind of want to make sure I get everything so it won't move around on me anymore. Oh, I thought I got, maybe, maybe it wasn't that one. Maybe it was over here. No, nope, it wasn't over there. So for some reason, I skipped that spot. There we go. That's what I wanted. I'm actually going to tilt this up a little bit here so I can.
Yeah, we just kind of make sure that uh, all these areas are are kind of holding itself for that way we can handle it a little bit easier. Yeah. That's why these heat resistant gloves are nice, especially when you have these small pieces like that that you don't want to mess around and get burnt. There we go. We're almost there. I just got to get a few more on here. Oh, Gary. Oh, great. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, oh, that's well, that's nice of you. Uh, that's great. Appreciate you coming on to the stream tonight. There are a couple of uh, new projects I do have, and I'll share with uh, you tonight one of them that is that is going to be a 36 inch wide panel by 18 inches high. Um, it's going to be a half round, and it's going into a window at a local. Uh, local home here where I live. I'm pretty excited about it. And I appreciate, uh, see, Needing Less uh, was on last week and helped me come to the decision of these uh, lips and what color I needed to make them. I was contemplating between pink and this red and when we put the red in it really uh really kind of spoke to us so we ended up going with the red so i just want to kind of check everything here make sure i've got it no i want to make sure i get a little bit more in this area
And it seems like I got a little bead here who doesn't want to set down here. There we go. And I need to fill that in a little bit. Okay. Seems like uh, everything's together pretty good here. I think I want to do one more here. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it over and do my backside uh, solder. So uh, it's the Tiffany method, uh, Gary, and it is, it's lead solder, but, um, you know, what you do, what you do what, when you're saying tin, um, tinning is the method to make the copper foil um, turn the silver color. Um, it is a, uh, it comes in a spool, the lead does. Now, there's also what they call lead strips or leading glass. And I've got some hobby cane that I use on the outside. But, I mean, this is lead as well. But what happens is that they have what they call H, uh, H cane, uh, which is two-sided to where you could actually mesh two pieces of glass up together. Um, and... You know, basically it looks like an H. So there'll be another indention on this side and be a little bit thicker. And it comes in this very size. That's what they call letting. Um, but what I do is I do the Tiffany method here uh, for this particular piece. And that's the copper foil. And then using lead from a roll and actually soldering uh, a bead around to uh, basically put the lead on. Hopefully that answers your question and what the difference is between that. Yeah, so I, I, um, I'm planning on doing another giveaway um, and I'm still putting together the actual giveaway I'm going to do, uh, but I'm actually going to do that when I hit a thousand subscribers and it's actually going to be a pretty, pretty cool giveaway. Um, I'm working on the pattern right now, and I, I think we'll get some interest. The people, uh, I'll just say, if you're into Star Wars, you might want to stay tuned. <laughs> so now that I've let that cool down just a little bit, um, I'm going to actually move this out of my way and hopefully I'm going to try and lift this up and turn it over. And I'm going to start on the back side here and get this area soldered up. Let's see how much time I got. Okay. 830. I've got. Got good time here. Oh, so I'm sorry. Okay. I understand now. Um, yeah, so the, the solder that I'm actually using, um, I'm actually getting ready to use a 60-40. So 60% lead, 40% tin, I believe is the mixture. So... That is that is the type of solder I use. Now they do make 50-50, uh, and that's what what this one was that I used to do my tacking. But when I actually uh, solder up pieces, I use 60-40. Ah, okay. I see that wire solder. I'm trying to read from a distance here a little bit. Sorry. 
Hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, so I use the 60-40. Cool. All right, so now we're going to actually go ahead and start doing some solder beads here. So you want to flux your area. Now, like I before, I've I've always used the uh, gel flux. Um, the the liquid flux, it just runs everywhere for me. Um, the gel flux actually stays where you put it. So that's the reason why I use it. Now they do make the paste flux, which I have some of that paste flux here. Um, but it's hard to clean off. Um, I've used it once and it's actually pretty hard to clean off. You really got to scrub your piece uh, to really get that off of there. So I'm going to stop in this area right here. All right. Clean my tip. And then... So... I am a little solder at a time person. Some people can sit there and just go right at it. And really just take off and be very quick. I, I tend to be very slow at my soldering, which I have to be careful so that way I'm not sitting on my foil too long and allowing the adhesive to come off. And if you saw what the Last piece I did soldering on with the the Tokyo Olympic one. Um, I had I fidgeted with the piece too much, and I had a couple blowouts. But you can clean them up. But it's just easier if you. Just not fidget so much with your solder lines. Really need to do a base solder on this one because it's a little bit of a gap here. Rosen core solder. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So, do you, I mean, do you like the so is that in the electronics work or uh, in the stained glass work that you do? Because I see a lot of electronics just use paste flux, but I'm a little confused as if you're talking about the uh, electronic work you do or if the uh, stained glass work you do.
If it's stain, I mean, do you like the Pace Flex? Does it work well for you if you're using it for stained glass? I'm going to let that set up all along there. I got a little bit of a gap in some of these areas, so I have to kind of let it set up. So that way when I come back with my other, my bead, it will set up pretty well. Uh, surface. Okay. I got you. Oh, uh, so the pin may not put enough on for you. I take it. You know, I, I, I do some soldering on electronics, uh, with some lighting that I do, uh, when I build some boxes, like the shadow box I did for a brain piece I uh, had that I did for somebody, and I put uh, RGB lights on the inside of it so they could change the color, and I had to solder up the strip because I had to cut it and then use some different style connectors on it. So that was kind of my first real kind of soldering of, uh, you know, electro using my little electronic solder that I have. Um, I repaired my TV with some capacitors before and the stock capacitors they put in the TV blew out. So I went and got some other capacitors, some a little bit better ones and repaired it and that tv is still going strong um <laughs> so i was really kind of happy about that <laughs> that i actually fixed something and it stayed that was actually my first time uh soldering uh electronics Now I am going to put some edging on this and I think I am going to do lead edging, but I am still debating that. I, I may decide to do zinc edging 
um, since they will probably be putting this on a stand, uh, maybe not hanging it. So I may have to order some more zinc edging uh, to finish this up. But we'll see. Um, I have to talk to uh, the person and see if they want the option for hanging or they, would they rather have it uh, just sitting on, you know, one of those uh, three-point stands. I think some light's going to go behind it, so I think that's going to be... Pretty cool uh, when they put the lighting behind it. Tip to fix the hate wasting. Yeah, I'm with you. I hate wasting stuff too. Um, it just seems like we are a consumable. Uh, society now. Um, it just seems like nothing lasts these days. Remember when TVs used to last 10, 15 years? <laughs> Now, granted, the TV that I fixed is about 10 years old now. Um, it's down here in our, our little family room we have downstairs um, that we have our exercise equipment in, but, or I should say our treadmill, the single exercise equipment we have. <laughs> Uh, I've, again, I appreciate everybody attending tonight. Um, ooh, that was a little hot there. <laughs> so you see I've got a gap here, so I will fill that in. Now, another method you can use, if, especially if you got a bigger gap um, and you don't want to put so much solder in, is you can actually take small pieces of copper wire and actually cut it to size into that gap and put it in there and it will actually uh, fill up that area and then also gives the uh, the solder something else to adhere to and kind of strengthen uh, that little area there that is always an option but it was enough to where i could just fill it in
Now, I think I said this last time I was soldering. I think I need to ensure I've got some music playing in the background for you guys. Um, I don't mind the silence, but I'm a... <laughs> I'm at peace when there's silence sometimes, but I think it'd be a little bit better for you. So I will make a note of that and have some soft music playing in the background next time. All right. Let me get some more flux in here. Looks like we'll get at least this side done while we are on. And then I will uh, share the upcoming project with you. Let me get this side done and I'll be able to let it cool down. And then I'll make sure that I get everything taped pretty good and get that video out soon of the whole process of this and then what it looks like finished I think I'm going to get me a smaller tip because I'm finding that some of the pieces that I'm starting to do have got some fine lines that I need to do. And I find that this larger uh, tip doesn't always cooperate with me real well. I keep turning around and checking, so hopefully you guys aren't thinking I'm totally involved in this. <laughs> I can sometimes space out for a very long period of time. I just, I really enjoy glass and the creation of pieces. I haven't had what I call a glass out uh, for a while. Um, I think I did one, oh, what was it? Maybe at the beginning of the year, or maybe it was in February, March time frame, maybe. And basically what that is, is that I'll just come down here into the studio and I will just be in the studio basically five days i'll come out to eat and go to sleep and i have a tendency to be able to get a lot of done but then again i end up rearranging my studio too because when you're in there that long you start to see little like ah, oh, it'd be nicer if that was over there and stuff like that. So you have a tendency to go into a rearranger mode. Okay, so I think I can go back over this now. There we go.
I am ready for another one of those. Um, I probably need to do that because, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. And really need to get stuff up worked on for Christmas. For the shop and some ornaments up and so forth. So be sure to check out the store if you're looking for some Christmas ornaments. I make good stocking stuffers uh, and stuff. All right, well, uh, I got to get that cleaned up here. Looking for any spots that I may have leveled off flat too much, but everything looked to be okay. Um, okay, so we need to let that kind of cool down and then we'll flip it over and I'll go back to it. And what we'll do is we'll come back to the main screen here. Let me transition here. back a transition again I appreciate everybody uh, oh my camera fell down on me wow hey everybody <laughs> So, you know, um, this new project that I've got uh, that's uh, coming up is going to going to be pretty, pretty cool. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I am going to feature it on our uh, on the live um, bits and pieces of it as I go through this project. Um, it is a cat panel. Um, like I said, it's going to be 36 inches wide by a uh, 18 inches tall. Now there were some color changes uh, that was that were made in some of the glass. Uh, so this is uh, version two rendering, um, but there are some color changes uh, in the chest area. Uh, we're actually going to use some aqua colored, and the eyes are going to be. Uh, kind of a bluish aqua color as well. So it's gonna, gonna be a great project. Um, it's gonna take me some time to do. Um, again, we are using Tiffany method on this and uh, it's gonna go inside, inside a window. So it's just gonna cover up an existing window. So that's the upcoming, another upcoming project. Uh, and then I've got a couple more. Um, the one I'm really excited uh, about is going to probably happen at the beginning of the year. Um, it's another incoming commission. I've been working with uh, this person uh, for about a month now uh, on the design. And we kind of came to a consensus of the design and on the glass colors. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, 
I've got to get some of these other commissions done first, and then I got to get through the holiday season uh, before I can uh, get started on that one. So that one's upcoming as well. So again, I, I thank everybody for coming onto the stream tonight, uh, taking a look at uh, what I'm doing, what I'm working on. And as always, I'm always wanting to um, bring more and more people into the community of stained glass uh, and introduce people to different artists. And we do have a spotlight interview coming up on the 25th of September uh, at 4 p.m. Um, it is a, a it is a, a, a stained glass artist that many of you may know uh, if you follow stained glass and if you're into gaming. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll be making uh, the announcement probably later uh, this week uh, on who who it is. I'll put probably uh, I'll be putting out a short a YouTube short video uh, introducing who the the guest is i'm really excited i've uh, been following him for a while and pretty pretty cool stuff uh, i really like his uh, uh stained glass so with that uh, again thank you uh again and if if you uh haven't subscribed to the channel be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell below with that i'll see you on the next stream